When you build a house out of cards, the walls will eventually tumble down. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things we want to see in House of Cards the final season. If you'll allow me to interject, over at Mojo Talks, we have a little show called Watch Club where we talk about the biggest shows on TV, like Legion and Westworld. Check out the playlist at the link below. For this list, we're taking a look at story and character arcs we want to see fully realized, as this Netflix original series approaches its exit from office. If you're not caught up, consider this your spoiler alert. Number 10, Fan Favorite Supporting Characters I can't help you the way you want me to. In addition to boasting household names like Robin Wright and Kevin Spacey, House of Cards showcased its supporting players. Standouts included Mahershala Ali as Remy Danton, Molly Parker as Jackie Sharp, and Gerald McCraney as Raymond Tusk. And it'd be great to see all of these characters get a proper send-off in the show's final eight episodes, whether they play major roles or simply make guest appearances. Do you plan on hanging this over my head every time I try to oppose you? One character we would especially love to say goodbye to is Freddie Hayes, since actor Reg E. Cathy, who won an Emmy for the role, sadly passed away in February 2018. Listen up, boy. He lied to you. The truth is, you ain't never gonna be president. Number nine, an explanation for what happened to Kathy Durant. This just in, Secretary of State Catherine Durant to appear in front of the House Judiciary Committee. Towards the end of season five, Secretary of State Kathy Durant threatens to throw a monkey wrench into Frank's grand plan by testifying before a special committee. When trying to reason with her doesn't pan out, Frank decides that Kathy needs to take a fall. No, literally, he pushes her down the stairs. But I meant what I said, Kathy. <laughs> when we last saw Kathy, she was unconscious and being rushed to the hospital. Did she survive the fall? Will she regain consciousness? Even if she does, will Kathy have any recollection of Frank pushing her? These are all questions that need to be answered in the final season. Here's hoping the writers don't just sweep Kathy under the rug. Help! Help! The secretary has fallen! Number eight, Jane Davis in a larger role. It's been a long time. Introduced in season five, Jane Davis acts as the Deputy Undersecretary of Commerce for International Trade. She quickly asserted herself as a crafty and manipulative figure who isn't afraid to get her hands dirty. Jane's backstory and motivations could still use fleshing out, however. From what we've seen so far, Jane seems like an ideal right-hand woman. What remains unclear is just how far Jane is willing to go for the White House. Is she mainly looking out for her own best interests, or will she be loyal to a fault like Doug? When you have an Oscar-nominated actress like Patricia Clarkson, give her character some really meaty material to sink her teeth into. I'll be operating out of the region. It's where my strength lies. Number seven, Leanne Harvey's fate. It was my understanding Right now, more seasoned chief of staff would send a strong message to the Congress and to the nation. Leanne just couldn't catch a break in the season five finale. After being promoted to Claire's chief of staff, she is almost immediately stripped of that position and finds herself out of a job. On her way to meet Doug, Leanne's vehicle gets run off the road as Frank watches from his laptop. Frank claims that you don't have to watch the whole movie to know how it ends. In the realm of television, however, nobody is truly dead until the audience gets a good look at their body. In Leanne's case, we never see her corpse after the crash. Although it is strongly suggested that she died, the credits haven't necessarily rolled on Leanne's story yet. Number six, a worthy enemy for Claire. Who are you to me? The Underwoods' ascension to the White House wouldn't have been nearly as interesting without a few formidable foes standing in their way. Now that Claire has reached the pinnacle of power, it'd be fun to see her go up against an enemy who could potentially jeopardize everything she's worked for. As for their motivations, Claire's opponent could either be a politician who wants to further their own career or a whistleblower who wants the Underwoods to pay for their crimes. Whether it's someone who's been on the show for a while or an entirely new character, this rival could give House of Cards the spark it needs to reach the home stretch in glory. An opportunity has presented itself. And I'm trying to take advantage of it. Number five, setting up a Doug Stamper spinoff. I wanted to hand this to you while you were still president. House of Cards might be ending, but it's been reported that a spin-off series is in the works at Netflix. While the details aren't set in stone yet, Doug Stamper seems like the prime candidate to take center stage. Dedicating his life to Frank, Doug has emerged as one of the show's most interesting and disturbing characters. With the Underwoods out of the picture, though, Doug's purpose in life might take on a whole new meaning. I think I'm gonna just sit here for a while. 
it'd be nothing short of fascinating to see how Doug functions without his supreme overlords. Even if the spin-off ultimately doesn't materialize, we are still eager to see what Doug's fate will be. After all, Claire still hasn't pardoned him. But you have to pardon me first, and at the right time, Doug. Number four, Conway making a comeback. I mean, a declaration of war. Whereas most of the characters on House of Cards are just power hungry, Will Conway emerges as a candidate who could actually potentially make the country a better place. Despite the occasional outburst, he's still an infinitely more honest politician than Frank or Claire. Yet good morals and values do not always get you ahead in Washington. Through manipulation, the Underwoods are able to secure their places in the White House. Conway is forced to concede, leaving both him and his family in an uncertain place. You know I'm going to be the president. I hope so, sir. Can Conway make a political comeback? Does his presidential loss also mean the end of his marriage? There's still a fair deal that can be done with him in season six. I'll be declining. Well, I'm so sorry to hear that, Will, and I wanted to wish you the very best. Number three, the Underwoods getting their just desserts. I want to believe you, Francis. They may sometimes be more anti-heroes than straight-up villains, but it would still be very necessary and satisfying to see Frank and Claire finally pay for their crimes. Some of our favorite characters have died because of their corruption, including but not limited to Peter Russo, Rachel Posner, and Tom Yates. Zoe Barnes' death in particular left behind a trail of tragedy, although Tom Hammerschmidt has fought to bring her killer to justice. Did you kill Zoe Barnes? I'm not prepared to answer that question. Seeing as how freedom of the press and fake news are such hot topics right now, it'd be appropriate if House of Cards ended with the Washington Herald exposing the Underwoods for the monsters they are. We don't submit to terror. We make the terror. Number two, Claire Underwood taking her turn as president. My turn. Season five gave us a taste of what Claire Underwood can do as acting president of the United States. She also established that she's well aware of the audience's presence, raising an iron fist to the fourth wall. But don't take it personally. It's how I feel about most everybody. Now that Frank's out of the way, Claire can take her turn as Commander-in-Chief. In some respects, Mrs. Underwood is even more ruthless and two-faced than her husband, which means things are really just getting started. I, Claire Hale Underwood, do solemnly swear the final episodes could not only explore how similar Claire is to Frank, but also how their leadership methods differ. With Claire in charge, we can expect something along the lines of Lady Macbeth goes to Washington. We're just getting started. Before we get to our top pick, here is an honorable mention. I want the Lexus. And you're trying to sell me a ladder. Number one, a fitting exit for Frank Underwood. How could you? Facing sexual misconduct accusations, actor Kevin Spacey was fired from House of Cards. Netflix claims that Spacey won't have any involvement in the final season, although it wouldn't be entirely surprising if he made a brief cameo. In any case, the writers have a lot of loose ends to tie up concerning Frank. Am I supposed to say thank you? No, but you will have to pardon me. For starters, did Claire pardon Frank? If not, what does that mean for their marriage? Did they separate or get divorced? Will Frank be in prison the whole season or will he just get killed off? It might actually be poetic if someone strangled Frank, just as he put a dying dog out of its misery back in the show's first scene. There, no more pain. Well done, team. Another perfect rank. What did you guys think? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to check out Watch Club on Mojo Talks, where we talk about the biggest shows on TV, like Legion and Westworld. Check out the playlist at the link below. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.